In this video, we will be tasting and talking about batch 93 of the Eco Cha Tea Club, a roasted Ui Oolong tea from Taiwan. Batch 93 of the Eco Cha Tea Club is a roasted Ui Oolong tea from Taiwan, specifically from Songbo Ling in Mingjen Township, Nanto County, Taiwan. Songbo Ling is a historical tea growing region uh, that claims to be earlier than Dongding Oolong tea or the history of Dongding Oolong tea, uh, particularly in the more modern incarnation dating back to the 1950s or so. Uh, it is said that there were people making a traditional style of oolong tea earlier than that of lugu. Um, it really comes down to the market and where, uh, which place got uh, recognized first to be a source of specialty tea. Let's just say that they were both making great tea way back when, and we are glad that there are still tea makers preserving that tradition. And this batch of tea is a particularly exemplary um, type of tea in this respect. Ui was almost exclusively grown in the Songboling area prior to the modernization of tea uh, that started in the 1980s meaning that there were hybrid uh, cultivars that were introduced and eventually replaced the Ui crops of tea because they were much more prolific, basically. They produced a lot more tea per area. So slowly but surely, Ui got uh, phased out and almost nobody grows it anymore. And our friend decided to revive this tradition of uh, pr cultivating Ui Oolong by planting a plot of ui uh, and growing it organically. So it has been naturally farmed uh, since it was planted, which is about 10 years ago now. We've shared this tea a few times with the Tea Club over our 93 uh, monthly editions. The first time was uh, month three, uh, the third batch of the Tea Club, and then again the 18th batch and the 61st batch, I believe. So uh, now being batch 93, that's over two and a half years ago is our most recent time that we shared it. Uh, and that time, uh, the batch 61 was a heavily roasted uh, ui. So this same uh, plot of tea, probably processed the same way, uh, medium oxidation, relatively speaking, heavier than a high mountain tea for sure, uh, with the idea of roasting it after um, it's produced. Um, and it was roasted a lot. That was uh, one of the most extensive roastings we've heard of. I think over a hundred hours, if I'm not, uh, if I remember correctly. Prior to that, we shared a charcoal roasted uh, form of this tea, which was really nice. Uh, there's a master charcoal roaster in that area doing it in a traditional way, and um, this tea really shined. Ui is uh, known to withstand uh, extensive roasting and hold up well and produce a very nice flavor profile. The very first time we shared it was unroasted and ui that's not roasted is incredibly uh, aromatic and full flavored as uh, a qing shangxing or a light uh, and aromatic style of oolong tea. This time, long story short, is uh, a medium roast, less than the Lugu Farmers Association Dongding Oolong Tea, um, something akin to what we uh, recently shared, but a little bit uh, more uh, roasted than the Meishan uh, Farmers Association standard. We shared a gold medal award-winning Jinshuan from Ali Shan. Uh, we, it's definitely a little more roasted than that. But it's kind of similar in that this tea really withstands, it handles the roasts very well. So I want to taste it now. In a word, it's nutty. Uh, there's just so much fresh uh, nut flavor to it. Um, a little bit of that bitterness of nuts, but I, I get like cashews, chestnuts, a little bit of pistachio, nutty, and then just a lot more um, aromatic qualities to it. But uh, 
Yeah, it's something about the roast level that maintains a freshness and but has a, a toasted quality to it. It's more, it's more fruity or at least aromatic than toasted grains. It's not that uh, fibrous, so to speak. There's more uh, fresh qualities to it. I brewed uh, 10 grams of tea in this 155 milliliter teapot for one minute first, uh, 50 seconds on the second brew, one minute 10 seconds on the third brew, one minute 20 seconds on the fourth brew, and then two minutes on the fifth brew. And I have brews one through four um, combined here after I poured one cup each. Let's go to pour two. Yeah, Ui has something that um, puts it in its own flavor profile, but it has to do with fresh and rich. It's kind of reminding me of a, like a Greek pastry now of crushed nuts and that buttery quality, uh, sweet. And the birds are really going for it outside my window here. Hmm. Fourth brew, a little bit more uh, savory herb, a little bit more fresh green quality in there. Not really green, definitely savory, but something more vegetal than uh, just a kind of meaty, oily uh, protein kind of character. The roast is most obvious, I feel, in the second brew. Yeah, and then slowly there's something more uh, vegetal coming out, something like a savory herb, like thyme, maybe, a very light uh, level of a, that kind of smoky. Mm. Brew one was really good. I wish I had more in this cup. That was amazing. Going through the fourth and then coming back to this one. There's just some, something really fresh about it. Uh, what I feel happens uh, in most cases when we're brewing Gong Fu style, even though I, I filled the pot, uh, I put the leaves in the pot, filled it up more than halfway, let it sit for less than five seconds before pouring it out to moisten the leaves and heat up the pot. So it was preheated and uh, there was contact with water uh, before we started brewing. Uh, but there's still this, like, the leaves are still reconstituting by the time you do the, pour off the first brew. And there's something really specific about that, uh, that quality, uh, that flavor profile that comes from the first brew. And after that, I feel like the leaves are probably 80 to 90% reconstituted. And I really like to catch the, the freshness, you know, the leaves as they brew. Uh, in stages incrementally. So that's the idea behind dropping the brewing time uh, by 10 seconds or so on the second brew, to not overbrew it and lose something that the second brew can offer in itself. Uh, by the third brew, you're getting more of the overall profile rather than these kind of layered profiles and, uh, that I feel happens in the first and second brews. Okay, I'm gonna go for the fifth. very much holding out. That's two minutes uh, on the fifth brew. It's just kind of like everything that happened before it and a little bit more mellowed in terms of its uh, quality of flavor. I'd say something in the later brews, there's a savory quality that comes out that I didn't taste in the first and second brew. In terms of the leaves, they're really pretty uh, dried leaves. They were de-stemmed in order to roast them properly. This is, uh, was machine harvested coming from this area. That's mostly the case, um, which uh, in short offers the benefit of harvesting at exactly the time you want, including the time of day. Um, and in addition to the uh, choosing the perfect weather, you can choose the perfect maturity uh, stage, how much the leaves have grown. Not too big, not too small, just right. 
So that's the benefit of uh, machine harvesting. And when they're gleaned like these are, uh, I mean, it's definitely more uniform than I would say the majority of hand-picked tea because care has gone into uh, grooming it after it was uh, harvested. The leaves are hardy. They're, they're not stiff, but they have a sense of being, th they are thicker than leaf from this area uh, of other strains and cultivars, that's for sure. And I think uh, there's a little bit of kind of um, uh, resilience, you might say. Like I said, it's not really stiff, but there's a little bit of toughness to it that is almost for sure a result of extensive roasting. They don't appear to have been roasted so extensively. These were roasted three times um, for over 30 hours. Uh, and brought up to like 120 degrees, I think, between 120 and 130. So they, they're just very resilient and they don't, um, they don't budge very easily in terms of being transformed by processing. So medium roast uh, after a medium oxidation in the processing of the leaves still has a lot of freshness to it. Okay, one of my favorite uh, aspects of a brew. I find it extremely satisfying. That nutty quality is kind of addictive. You want to keep sipping and getting it on your palate. And it goes right up into your sinuses. There's a lot of nose, um, a lot of kind of heady, uh, but mellow. It's not that fresh floral, even fruity. It's something more, let's say it one more time, nutty. Okay, there we have it. Uh, roasted ui oolong, uh, organically uh, farmed. No certification on this. This is just a private endeavor. It's a relatively small plot of tea by our good friend who uh, is one of the most successful merchants we know. Um, he is the top competition player that we know personally and really knows um, his teas overall. Whenever we have a broader question uh, that goes beyond farmers' uh, personal experiences, we go to him to find the answers. Uh, we feel really lucky to have developed a good relationship with him over the last 10 years or so because we can get teas like this. And he puts a lot of care, more care than anybody else we know, into his roasting. Definitely a master roaster. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you next month.